Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt prototype fight rigging deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a ton of new cards from the Brothers War, but the build around card is still from Streets of New Capenna, fight rigging, 3 man enchantment with hideaway 5. So when it enters the battlefield we get to take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, exiling one of them face down. And then at the beginning of combat on our turn we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control. Then if we control a creature with power 7, or greater, doesn't even have to be the same creature we targeted, we can play the exalt card without paying its mana cost. And whenever you can cheat on mana in Magic, those cards need to grab your attention, because it can lead to some very powerful turns. And it's no different here, as Fight Rigging can potentially set up a turn 4 Skitter Beam Battalion for 9 mana, a 4-4 with Trample and Haste, and when the Battalion enters battlefield if we cast it, which also counts with Hideaway, we get to create 2 tokens that are copies of it, so all of a sudden we're attacking the opponent for 12 points of Trample and Haste. And we have some other juicy prototype creatures, like the Frexen Flesh Gorger, which we can sometimes play for 3 mana as a 3-3 with Menace and Life Link and Ward, making the opponent pay life equal to the Flesh Gorger's power. But if we find it off Fight Rigging, we can now cast it as a 7-5 with those same abilities, making it very difficult for opposing creature decks to race. And our final prototype creature is the Rootwire Amalgam, can be a 2 mana 2-3, two, and then for 5 mana we can sacrifice it, creating an XX Golem token, where X is 3 times the Amalgam's power. So on turn 5 we could have a 6-6 six, six with haste, but we can also cast it for 5 mana as a 5-5, five, five, and then the token will be a 15-15, fifteen, fifteen. could even make it bigger thanks to the counters from Fight Rigging. And if we find it with Fight Rigging, of course we can cast the 5 mana side of it for free. So those are all the exciting prototype creatures we can sneak into play with Fight Rigging. And then a new card to enable Fight Rigging is Clay Champion, which is X and 4 mana for a 2-2, enters the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it for each double green mana spent to cast it. We're going to ignore the white half of it. So for 4 mana we get an 8-8 if we cast it for quadruple green. Now you may be wondering how do we cast a quadruple green card in a 3 color deck? Well the answer is have all your lands produce at least a green mana, so we've got a ton of dual lands, no room for basics, and we even have to play some of the weaker dual lands like Jungle Hollow and Haunted Mire, which come into play tapped. Typically not cards you see in standard mana bases, but it's a necessary evil if we want to play a three color deck and still play a turn four clay champion reliably. We also need double black for a turn three flesh gorger, which puts even more restrictions on our mana base, so that's why we ended up with this configuration. Does mean that our first two turns are often going to include some tap lands. So we won't often be able to curve out and play a 2-drop on curve, but that's also why we're playing 4 copies of Cut Down, so we can play a black tapped land on turn 1, and then turn 2 play another tapped land, and still be able to interact at least on turn 2 with Cut Down, as opposed to our 2-mana removal spells, where we also have Go for the Throat to deal with larger creatures from the opponent. And then we also get to play with Shakedown Heavy as another way to enable Fight Rigging on turn 4, a 3 mana 6 4 with Menace. But whenever it attacks, the defending player may have you draw a card if we do untap the Heavy and remove it from combat. So that's one way the opponent can prevent taking any damage, but then the Heavy turns into a nice card draw engine. And then we also have the full set of Fable of the Mirror Breaker as our Red Splash. Since we already have Proving Ground in our mana base, which is just better than some of the other dual lands like Haunted Mire. So that's just a strict upgrade. And once we have Proving Ground, it's not too difficult to include the Carpluzen Forest and Rockfall Vale. Add a bit of red mana to potentially hard cast the 5 mana prototype version of Battalion. And then Fable of the Mirror Breaker also becomes a nice addition, giving us that Shaman to make some treasures. Makes it easier to cast the expensive half of our prototype creatures and then chapter 2 to discard and draw, also helpful in finding fight rigging, and eventually Reflection of Kiki Jiki gives us an additional tool to maybe copy some of our expensive prototype creatures. So yeah, I think that just about covers it, so let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and no fight rigging, but turn 3 Fable, probably still worth keeping. Won't be able to play Amalgam on 2 with my current mana situation. But yeah, that's the drawback of a 3-color mana base that needs to support double black on 3 and quadruple green on 4. So our early turns are not too exciting. 
Opponent's got T-Initiates. Hopefully no Thalia here to make Fable more expensive. But if they do, we can still play a Flesh Gorger at least. Okay, so we can play Fable. And, uh, yeah, hope to find a fight rigging, but we also need a creature to enable it in the first place. Cathar Commando could destroy our enchantments. And we'll also grow the initiate here. So, yeah, pretty good value. Probably okay trading for the Commando if we get the chance. And Guardian of New Benalia. That's fine. So we'll see if they sacrifice for Fable. They do. Okay, Shakedown Heavy can enable Fight Rigging in the future, also just a large blocker. Although I might prefer playing a Flesh Gorger here. Especially in the case of a Brutal Cathar exiling it. And then... I think I'm okay trading Shaman for a card and getting a treasure token in the process. Opponent takes it. Play Flesh Gorger. And tap land. Okay, so we're building up our mana nicely. And we've got some heavy hitters in hand. And we're ready for a fight rigging if we draw it. It's going to be another Cathar Commando. Could destroy the Flesh Gorger as well. And they're going to go for it right away. Still costing them three life at least. Take four. And yeah, happy to attack with the Shaman. Could also play Hasty Battalion for five. Which would hit the opponent for 8 total. Yeah, I mean, that's a race we're winning, so that seems worthwhile. And then next turn we could make another haste creature by playing Amalgam and sacrificing it. So I could play Amalgam now if I'd like, or I could keep the mana for next turn, which... It's probably better since it gives us more options. And uh, that way we can maybe play a Flesh Gorger for 7 if we need to. And since the uh, token gains haste, whether we play Amalgam now or next turn, it's the same. And I don't think the extra blocker matters too much. But there's a world where opponent plays a board wipe and makes their Guardian indestructible and then we'll regret playing it first. Okay, it's going to be Adversary just as a 3-1 lifelink. And the opponent's forced to stay back. There's fight rigging, so heavy plus fight rigging seems too fun to pass up. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Maybe find a 9 mana battalion would be one of our better hits. And Fable and Amalgam the options. I guess we'll take a 5 mana Amalgam here. Counter on Heavy. And still worthwhile to attack with all. Opponent has one favorable block. We'll still make a treasure and deal a bunch of damage in the process. Okay. And once again, probably wait on casting the Amalgam for two. Put and make some trades. That's all fine. We're gonna try and save Guardian. Discarding Adlin. And pass. So next turn we could make a 15-15, maybe even more with fight rigging. Although 
opponents got the Brutal Cathar. Fair enough. So they're fighting the good fight. Although I can play a 7 mana Flesh Gorger. Could attack first unless I want to put a counter on it. So we'll play a 7 mana Flesh Gorger. Make it an 8 6. So if they want to take it out with another Brutal Cathar or a Commando, it's going to cost them 8 life and found another Fight Rigging. So we'll play this out. Alright, let's see how our opponent gets out of this. No attacks. And I can't pass up on another Fight Rigging times 2 even. Hopefully they don't concede. So this one finds Battalion. And this one finds another battalion. Okay, let's go. Triple fight rigging. We'll spread around the wealth a little bit. Oh yes. We get the token since we cast it, even if it was for free. And uh, yeah, there's no subtle wreckage in standard that I'm aware of. So I'm gonna click the attack all button. And our opponent takes it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we don't have any fight riggings, but a fable can maybe help find one. And the mana looks good, so I'll try it. Turn 2 we can cut down if needed. Turn 3, maybe start with fable. Turn 1 sleeper, so can maybe wait until that levels up to take it out. And go for the throat, potentially an answer to Shieldred. I'll take one, maybe kill their two drop instead. And a Tainted Adversary. Yeah, I could uh, take out the Adversary here. And there's Fight Rigging, perfect. So now, interesting choice. Opponent could be holding up removal for Shakedown Heavy if I play that or play fight rigging with a plan of next turn playing heavy. So there is a world where actually playing fable first is still the correct move. Maybe make them answer the shaman token and uh, if we do get to attack with it the treasure can help us double spell. But I'm just playing a flash gorger. That one we cannot go for the throat. So what's the plan here? I can play fight rigging, put counter on shaman to attack. And then maybe get rid of the Battalion, although I could also keep it as a decent 5 mana play. I think we can still do better. Okay, so yeah, I think that's the plan. Fight Rigging, Counter on Shaman attack. And I'll still have Go for the Throat available. Did not find anything too exciting, sadly, of Fight Rigging. Double Clay Champion will just be a 2-2, so might be better off with a land at that point. Opponent takes it. Okay, so at least the land gets us closer to playing a 7 mana Flesh Gorger. And there's Shieldred, which we can take out with Go for the Throat. I'll just do it now. I guess we can wait until they attack first. Another Fight Rigging. And this time we found a Flesh Gorger, that's probably good enough over another Fight Rigging. And then we'll make this a 5-5. This way we have both the Shaman and Shakedown Heavy to enable double Fight Rigging. 
could have played Shakedown Heavy and then with the extra land and the treasure I could have cast a second main fight rigging. And our opponent actually has an Invoke Despair here. So that can take care of either both my creatures, which includes an enchantment, or I can get rid of one of the fight riggings. I don't hate the idea of just getting rid of both of my creatures here basically and then Shakedown Heavy enables double fight rigging and fight rigging can keep growing the Flesh Gorger. Even though Reflection could definitely have its uses here, maybe more so than an extra fight rigging. Yeah, I guess that makes sense to just sacrifice the weaker fight rigging. And then next turn we can play Shakedown and copy it. I guess there was even a world where I could have enabled Fight Rigging, cast a large Flesh Gorger, and then copied that one with Kiki Jiki. Yeah, that was probably even better here. Get a hit in for 7 instead of 6 and gain 7 as well. Would have had to be in full control for that to work. Otherwise, uh, it probably moves to combat before we get a chance to do it. But that's okay. Still in a great spot here. Next turn we can cast a 5 mana battalion if we'd like. Another Invoke Despair, however. So I guess get rid of Heavy and Fight Rigging. And then keep Reflection to copy Flesh Gorger. So back to back Invoke Despair, getting rid of Fight Rigging, but we might still be in okay shape. Opponent can double block one of the Flesh Gorgers if they stay back, but that may be a greedy attack. So if I go for a 5 mana battalion, I wouldn't be able to use Reflection, so we'll just play a 3 mana Flesh Gorger and copy instead. And not quite a lethal attack. Would have been lethal had we made the uh, play I described last turn. But we're back to 20. And two menace creatures that are both lethal. I guess your opponent can attack to go up to four, but then the hasty battalion should help us cross the finish line. Knight to prevent life gain could have been useful earlier. Evolved Sleeper can eventually gain Death Touch. But uh, as it stands, your opponent still seems dead. Opponent passes, Amalgam, I'm unable to play and activate, but yeah, Hasty, Battalion, and activate Reflection should be more than enough. Well, that was a sweet game, and our opponent had a very functional draw. They curved out, had a shield root, double invoke despair. So shows the power of fight rigging if we find it. Opponent blocks, but yeah, they're uh, very dead here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got our heavy in case we find fight rigging, bit of removal, battalion at five. I'll try it. I'll lead with a proving ground, and then we can have a Turn 2, land come into play untapped if needed. Probably won't be needed. Opponent with a turn 1 planes, mono white so far. And we'll play our shakedown heavy. If our opponent answers with brutal Cathar, we can kill it here. It's gonna be a lay down arms instead. Yeah, that's a clean solution for Shakedown Heavy. Can play Flesh Gorger now at least. And a tap jungle hollow seems fine. Next turn battalion. It's your opponent on a more controlling white deck with lay down arms restoration. Could be a tough matchup for fight rigging. 
especially if there's a board wipe next turn. But at least we get a healthy attack in, in the meantime. Opponent falls to 11. Could also be a portal to Phyrexia deck that's about to discard something expensive to reanimate, but nope. Opponent happy to keep their spells and the Dawn Sky the play. That one doesn't die to cut down. I think we still attack into it. Deal 7, play Fable. And then I should probably hang on to most of my cards to discard next turn. Could also play Forest Cycle Proving Ground and the extra mana could maybe come in handy. And a wedding announcement will make an extra token, which I could kill with Cutdown times two. And I think at this point... We might be better off uh, discarding Cutdown to look for something more exciting. Another Battalion would be nice. No harm in cycling this. Okay, Shakedown Heavy. So what happens if I keep the Cutdown? These also Trample for what it's worth. But if I were to cut down a token, they can still double block Flesh Gorger. And then eat a two-powered creature, which I guess would still have them taking four. They could, instead of double-blocking Flash Gorger, let that one go through. Chump the Tramplers with the larger creatures, and then chump the uh, Shaman with the 1-1. One so maybe I should actually discard Heavy and Hollow, keep cut down, because if we find another spot removal spell we can just win here. Fight rigging on the Trampler, is that good enough? I guess they can still block with one of these. But what if I fight rigging on Flesh Gorger? What happens? This will grab an Amalgam. So yeah, rigging on Flesh Gorger means they have to double block it. Otherwise they die, so let's say double block with uh, a Restoration plus a token. Block Trampler, then they should still be dead. Um, question is if I need to cut down before or after blocks. I guess before blocks is probably safest. So this should do it. Exactly enough. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and no red mana, no fight rigging, easy mulligan. This is better, I've got fight rigging and a creature to enable it. And then I can hang on to my two removal spells over Amalgam, or I can keep the Amalgam as an extra creature to go with fight rigging. And then, do I get rid of cut down or go for the throat? Cut down I can at least cast on turn two with my current mana situation. Yeah, I'll get rid of the Amalgam, I think. And then hope we're up against a deck where our removal spells will have some use. Turn 1 Island does not bode well for our spells resolving necessarily. Do I try and resolve Fight Rigging or do I try and resolve Shakedown Heavy is the question. Well, I guess that answers that question. And Heavy resolved. Putin might have a Fading Hope to bounce it, however. And yep, yeah, there it is. Okay, so they might be packing some three mana counter spells. Well, let's find out. Still resolves. Having go for the throw to answer a haughty gin if that shows up is also important. As our opponent goes digging. Shore up and spell pierce. Spell pierce would have been able to counter fight rigging on the cheap. And there's Hodijin with one mana available. Land sadly comes into play tapped. So I wouldn't be able to double spell here the way I wanted to. So yeah, if we go for fight rigging, they could still spell pierce. So I think I just attack and then try and play another shakedown heavy. 
I doubt our opponent lets us draw an extra card here. So it'll probably take six. Does have menace. And play another heavy. And see if they picked up some counter spells in the meantime. Alright, that resolves. So they might have some protection spells in hand as well, since they discarded Shore Up, they might have a replacement. But this could still be a way to buy time against Haughty Jin. Especially in the case of a slip out to back. Would not surprise me if they had a negate in hand for fight rigging as well. Okay, double Haughty Jin, that is scary. But uh, fight rigging has a chance of resolving if they don't have a negate. So do I maybe try and go for the throw at Haughty Jin, and then Fight Rigging? Since we're hoping Fight Rigging is going to be better than killing Haughty Jin. Not sure if that's true. But it is definitely more exciting, so I guess that's an argument for making this play. Opponent's got the slip out to back. And Fight Rigging will resolve. And finds another go for the throat. I guess it works. So we got rewarded for resolving Fight Rigging. Attack for 13. They could fall to 1 here, but they're gonna prevent us from dealing any damage and try and race with Haughty Jin. And we no longer have Go for the Throat as something to draw into here. So yeah, there's a decent chance this Haughty Jin goes a distance. Delver we can cut down at least. Opponent Spell Pierces, so they're down to one card in hand. But Haughty Jin is lethal and none of my lands gain life. So yeah, we'll see if they let us draw with Heavy. So maybe you find something useful. Alright, find a battalion that can make some ground blockers, but it's not going to stop the flying djinn, which will kill us exactly. That's too bad. So yeah, close game here against Mono Blue. Double Haughty Jin got the job done. Make disappear. Definitely should have played my land first, but this game was already decided. Alright. GG's. Heavy does have the drawback of uh, sometimes not dealing damage, and we saw it in action here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this seems like a keep, even though we don't have the double black yet for Flesh Gorger. Early Fable is going to be our plan here. And then we've got Heavy for Fight Rigging. Play tapped Hollow, so we can potentially play turn 3 Flesh Gorger. Still leaning towards Fable. Opponent Asper Colors with Evangel. Okay. So we can expect Rafine in our future. There's Fight Rigging. Okay, does that change our play? So I guess if opponent plays Rafine next turn, they could still attack and this will gain Menace. So they don't necessarily have to kill Heavy for um, Synthesis to attack. I think like last time, I'm still tempted to Fable first. Just because the Shaman will maybe make it easier to double spell. And then we don't have to make the choice, we can just play Heavy and Rigging in the same turn. Opponent had Rafine, so had I gone for Heavy, Rigging would have worked out, but of course, had we played Heavy, they might have taken a different approach and kept up removal instead. Clay Champion also enables Fight Rigging, and we can play it this turn. So, what to discard? Maybe one Flesh Gorger can go, do I discard both is a question. Yeah, maybe discarding both Flash Gorgers to look for, let's say, a uh, cut down or go for the throat could be worth it. Find another Flash Gorger on a land. So, 
yeah, I think I'm down to attack, play a clay champion, and then next turn we can fight rigging and heavy in the same turn. And an 8-8 that cannot be killed by go for the throats also relevant. Also important that we present potentially two creatures that enable fight rigging, so if they kill one we still have the other to enable it. Opponent's just going for a wedding announcement, that's fine. So they could still attack. Since the token can maybe trump clay champion, but then they would have to only attack with one creature. Because otherwise if they don't get the token and they draw instead. So it's just Evangel attacking. So they get the token to trump Clay Champion. And our opponent still has one mana available. Well, I think uh, Shakedown plus Rigging is still the plan. Finding Battalion, there we go. And uh, sure, I'll put the counter on heavy on the off chance that they have like a bounce spell for one mana, but I doubt it. This should put us pretty far ahead. So opponent jumps clay champion, blocks shaman, still takes 12. And, uh, yeah, I don't think our opponent can necessarily kill us next turn with an uh, evasive creature since we can double block Evangel. Still at 12. And I don't know if their Esper deck necessarily has any board wipes, which is what they probably need here. Next turn Reflection can copy, I guess, like a 4-4 Battalion. Probably still the best we can do, since Champion would only be a 2-2. Alright, the fairy can make a relatively large spirit token if they draw cards here. And our opponent sends in the team. But yeah, now they won't get any tokens of announcements, so they seem pretty dead to me. Opponent got up to 8 power. So yeah, they almost got there, but not quite. And we can still double block Evangel if we'd like. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, I see this opening hand with heavy and double fight rigging, and I definitely keep. Just gotta dodge some interaction. And then could even cut down turn one here if I have to. Could potentially throw off my curve if our opponent plays a Thalia turn two, though. So it might be worth it to just play the tap land now. Potentially cut down a Thalia next turn, so we can still play a 3-mana fight rigging if we miss a land drop. Okay, can play Amalgam now as an extra blocker. And then we'll see if we want a rigging or heavy first. Heavy they could exile with a Brutal Cathar, in which case we cut down. Opponent might have some reinforcements here. Nope, protect the negotiator. So opponent is packing counter spells. That does change the texture of the game slightly. Another officer for now. And reinforcements main phase. Not sure why. All right, I guess we'll play heavy and then hope they don't have an answer to it. Can also block quite well. Opponent revealing the Shield of Argive, 3-4. Okay, that can help them go wide. But we can go for Fight Rigging here if we'd like. Or I can play another Shakedown Heavy as an extra blocker. On the off chance that we miss on Fight Rigging and our opponent can go wide next turn. I think we need to have a bit of faith in our Fight Rigging here. And found Battalion, there we go. And now it's going to be very difficult for opponent. Do I attack with everyone? 
Might still want to leave some blockers back because the shield of Argive does not mess around. But uh, Heavy can attack and let's say we send in one battalion. Opponent lets us draw. Takes four. Another reinforcements. And ooh, I see. Well, that could uh, be a problem here. Down to two we go, and our opponent all of a sudden with an army of tokens. Yeah, giving the team flying with aviators, so... Yeah, we could still easily lose now. What's the plan? Well, I can kill the aviator, but our opponent has enough tokens now where they can probably go wide. So how do we manage here? Can play another fight rigging, hope to hit another battalion, if that is even enough at this point. Alright, well, fair game to our opponents. I guess they found a way. And yeah, we even found another battalion. So, hollow back up to three. Put all the counters on our tramplers here. I guess I probably didn't account for the plus one counters from fight rigging. So maybe we have enough now, but I think we're still going to be a point or two short. Bund let us draw with a shakedown heavy, unsurprisingly. Battalion does trample, so they'll need to throw a few more under the bus. All right, let's see what happens. Opponent survives at one life. Yeah, can't be any closer than this. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got Clay Champion, which we can play on turn 4, and a uh, bit of removal and amalgam in the meantime, so I'll try it. Do have a lot of tap lands, however, so that's going to mess with our curve. Turn 1 Delvers, or point on a mono blue deck, presumably. Not what we want to see, necessarily. Delver does not transform, at least. And we can play an Amalgam, plus a tap land. Clay Champion unlikely to resolve, and if it does, they still have Fading Hope to bounce it. Opponent bounces Amalgam instead. Don't hate seeing that. And another Delver. Okay, well, we've got clay champions for days. I think I still prefer this over uh, trying to double spell Amalgam and go for the throat. But it might have another fading hope end of turn. If they don't, we have a large attacker now that can maybe outraise Delver. Which still hasn't transformed, so opponent getting a bit unlucky here. Haughty Jin plus land. So we can attack, and then I could try and go for the Throat Haughty Jin, although there is a decent chance that they have a protection spell given that they haven't countered anything, so I think I might be better off just playing another Clay Champion at that point. But we can attack first. If we waited one more turn on Clay Champion, we could have played it for uh, an 11-11, basically. But 8-8 uh, eight, eight is good enough here when our opponent's at 12. The other option was playing a 5-mana Amalgam. 
Okay, opponent had the Fading Hope after all, but took eight first. So I guess that worked out in a way. Double Hardy Gen is scary. And our opponent sends in most of the team. Flash Gorger to gain life could also come in handy. So what's the play now? I could attack, see what her response is, and then maybe kill a hardy djinn, forcing a protection spell. That way they can't counter my follow-up. Delver chumps. If they have a slip out to back, it's better to use go for the throat in the opponent's turn, of course, but they might have a shore up instead, in which case it's better to do it now. Could also be a negate. Alright, that works. So that takes some pressure off our uh, life total as well. They could still counter the champion. Yep, make disappear. That's fine. Delver finally transforms, revealing Consider. So I'm hoping to resolve a Flash Gorger next turn so we can start gaining some life back as well. Sadly, did not find any red mana whatsoever for Battalion, so that's not happening this game. Aberration stays back. Because, yeah, we could potentially play Amalgam for two and make a 6 6 haste here, which would threaten lethal. I guess we'll see if this resolves first. Dos. So yeah, I think presenting a lethal is probably better than playing a Flesh Gorger here. Opponent chumps, take six. So both creatures are lethal. Hardy Jin unlikely to kill me at 12. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, so we got our payback against Mono Blue. So yeah, this Junt fight rigging prototype deck is a delight when it goes off. Some very close games along the way against the soldier deck. But uh, yeah, finding a battalion to cast for free of fight rigging as early as turn 4 doesn't get any better. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.